Hi everyone, welcome to The Last Drop, I am Chris, thank you for joining me today, really appreciate it. Uh, as you're aware, or may not be aware, I do a whiskey diary every month of all the brand new whiskies that I have tried, and I write them down. Uh, this, you know, I, yeah, it's a lovely little journey that I've been on, and obviously this year I've tried over 153 different whiskies. Um, I've counted them up in my book and I'm just going to take you through the ones that have scored the highest uh, and then I'm going to tell you what my whiskey of the year has been. Um, so without further ado let's get into the first one that scored, I don't know, we'll say over 9, on, nine out of 10, we'll, we'll go for that. Right, so first up on the list is back in January, whew, 12, nearly 12 months ago, uh, I was on a Campbelltown Festival Monks tasting. And last dram of the night was a 10 year old long rower, 53.7%. Fantastic stuff, toffee, cigar ash, punchy, uh, no major peat, um, but definitely there. Uh, and I, yeah, gave it 9 out of 10, an incredibly Moorish whiskey. Right, so the next 9 out of 10 was a special single cask from Sullivan's Cove. So Australian whiskey. Um, this is barrel number TD0214, if you want to be into that. 45.8%. Uh, Close vanilla, almost minty, sort of a rye cask maybe going on in there. Rich finish, but um, sharp up from creamy finish as well. Really, really nice. And that was a 9 out of 10 as well. Right, so next up, um, we'll go back to the 17th of the second. Uh, Kilcarran, 8 year old cast strength, 56.9%. Uh, Fantastic stuff. I just put, well, damn. It's definitely different from the last Kilcarran, heavily um, cast strength, not heavily peated. Um, but yeah, this had heavy, funky sherry nose, um, a fresher sherry than previous, so it wasn't as rich. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. Funky, funk's still there. Fantastic stuff. Slight peat in the background. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic whiskey. Right, so skipping ahead to the 17th of the 3rd. Um, so yeah, back in March, a 9.5 out of 10 here. Uh, a Buna Harvin Manzanilla finish, 11 year old, 54.2%. Nutty donuts, um, raisins, caramel, dark chocolate. Really, really interesting as most bunas are. Uh, fantastic stuff. Really, really, really good. I can't remember. Uh, maybe I shouldn't mention that one or mention this one. It's the 1996 Oloroso 53.3% Dusty Cinnamon Deep Dark Fruit 9 out of 10. Right, so back in April, on the 8th to be exact, uh, I've done a whistle pig tasting. Um, and the 9 out of 10 here was a Amburana finished 12 year old at 43%. It was an old world, the whiskey exchange exclusive bottling, I think. Um, incredibly interesting. So this got 9 out of 10 from me because it was so different from anything else, I think. Um, but the, yeah, dark chocolate bounty bars, basically. Um, the Amberuna cask gave it just a coconut. Just a, a literal coconut flavour, tasting, smell. Uh, just like those pink marshmallow chocolate biscuits you get, or coconut biscuits. I think you know the ones I mean. And that's like oblong with a jam down the middle and then uh, co uh, sort of marshmallow up the side with coconut all over the top. It just tastes like that. I mean, it Incredible stuff. Um, really interesting. If you get Amberuna, I'm looking out for Amberuna class now. So, just to see what that brings to the table in the future. Okay, so it's not whiskey, but on the 22nd of April uh, was the virtual cognac show from the Whiskey Exchange again. Uh, and yeah, Pale and Dry Exo Centennial Edition, Grand Champagne, 42%, uh, 2 to Three year aged in cellar once it's been blended as well. Um, brioche notes, apricot, grapefruit, vanilla, fantastic stuff. As most pale and dry XO is, so lovely. So, next day of the cognac, virtual cognac show, um, a Hein tasting um, on the 23rd. 
1985 Yarnak aged, so Hindu early landed, which um, means they age it in the UK, um, as opposed to in France. Um, so yeah, 1985 Yarnak, uh, more powerful fruit compared to the 86 version, which we previously tried. Um, but yeah, gave that one a 9 out of 10. Fantastic cognac. So, uh, next day, Armagnac tasting Label 1996, full 100% Agni Blanc, I believe, 41.5%, baked apricot pie, nuts, leather, and quite a drying effect at the end. A lovely, lovely Armagnac, and one I do recommend you go and check out. Right now we're into May, so another 9 out of 10 in May, so 26th of the 5th, so right near the end. Uh, this was a London Whiskey Club tasting. Uh, it was a Hazelburn Long Row tasting, so the either side of the Springbanks. Um, so yeah, the triple distilled Hazelburn, and then yeah, the peated, heavily peated Long Row Springbank, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, this one was a seven year old. Gaia Barolo, so wine and peat, um, so very much a long row tradition. Um, summer fruits, bold and fruity, really, really good. Nine out of ten, yeah, seven year old. Lovely. Didn't write it on the ABV for that. Weird. Okay, so now into the end of June, um, we've got our first bourbon that's high up. Um, so I bought myself an MB Roland bourbon. Um, really, really good um, bourbon, sort of very craft based, I guess you want to call it. Um, but yeah, dusty corn, spicy oak, vanillas, uh, light honeycomb, really, really nice, really enjoying it um, as a, a sip of bourbon rather than Wild Turkey 101, which I also have on the shelf. Um, but yeah, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10, which is very, very good for a bourbon. And definitely up there with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, and all those big boys, you know. So, looks like I was pretty stingy through the summer with my uh, scores. Um, or I just didn't taste some great whiskey over the summer, which is strange. Um, but yeah, next up in the end of September, Springbank Cask Strength. Um, the 100% bourbon finish, uh, floral, woody, vanillas, toffees, a little bit of smoke, uh, salty in there as well. And standard Springbank car strength, lovely, 9 out of 10. Okay, so we're now into December. So yeah, again, really pretty pretty stingy with the old marks. Um, Glen Turret 12, maiden release. Uh, I went over to Germany to go and pick up this bottle. Um, bit of a weird story. But obviously you can hear about that in my previous video. Um, really, really nice. Uh, I've written down here, smells and tastes like friendship. Uh, what a fantastic bottle is. Um, really, really nice. Um, Glen Tower 12, fantastic whiskey. Right, so on the 3rd of the 12th, um, we had a Campbelltown tasting with Swag, so Sussex Whiskey Appreciation Group. Uh, if you're in the south, um, please come and check us out. Uh, really could do with everybody meeting up more and so forth. But yeah, so we had yeah uh, a Campbelltown tasting thanks to Kenny. Uh, and a highlight for me was, I mean they were all really decent whiskies, but highlight for me was an SMWS um, bottling of. Glen Scotia. So 93.157 is the number. 59.6%. Um, uh, I think it's called Cherry Blossom in Campbelltown or Sea Town. Uh, this had floral uh, notes, seaside, uh, fruity, a bit of menthol going on in there as well, smoky as well, but then a the chocolate sort of finish going on as well in there. Really, really, really interesting whiskey, actually. Um, definitely one that stood out from the evening, uh, and definitely my favourite. So there we go. So there you have it. Um, that is my highlights of the year out of 150 odd different whiskies. They are my nine plus, um, nine out of ten plus. You know, uh, whiskies. Uh, two highlights there, obviously the Bunnerhaven at 9.5 uh, 
and the MB Roland, two completely different whiskies. Um, bear in mind it's a nine out of 10 for a bourbon and that's a nine and a half out of 10 for a, a scotch. Um, so yeah, two different categories really. So I, I wouldn't put them in the same ilk as such. Um, but yeah, let's go because of that. Obviously those two are, they were very good. Um, could I say that the MB Roland should be my whiskey of the year? Could, it's definitely up there. It's definitely gonna be the number two spot, I think. Um, really, really fantastic bourbon uh, and definitely one you should go and check out. But whiskey of the year, for me, Grand Turret 12. Um, a lot's been said about this bottle. Uh, I've said it in previous videos uh, and so forth and lots of other people have said lots of good things about it. Fantastic whiskey. It says to me, uh, which I hope to you it says as well, just a, a friendship, a caring, a sharing whiskey. Uh, it's, it has special memory in it. I have to go to Germany to go and get it. Um, what a fabulous trip that was. Uh, and everything shared about it, it just reeks loveliness really um, and that's that's what I think it you know highlights this year we've been able to do some great in real life sort of events and that's a highlight for me uh, it's a 9 out of 10 that Brunner Harvin was fantastic but I can't get hold of that Glen Tower 12 you can get hold of as well so it's a bit more accessible uh, and that's what I think may it the whiskey of the year for me um so yeah 2021 chris moore the last drop glen turret 12 thank you for watching uh please hit that like button uh subscribe if you haven't already uh different videos may be coming next year um but yeah comment down below what's your whiskey of the year been um really interesting to see what yours is maybe you agree with me you probably do um, but yeah, that is the last drop.